Lesson 3. Near Violence at Traverse de Sioux According to the Treaty of the Traverse de Sioux, the upper bands of Dakota were to be given $275,000, known as hand money, in order to assist with the cost of removal to a reservation and their subsistence for one year. However, at the same time as signing the treaty, the Dakota signed the Trader's Paper, which designated much of the hand money directly toward the payment of debts. Later, when payment was to be made, this came into contention and caused a near outbreak of violence at Traverse de Sioux. On September 8, 1852, Minnesota Territorial Governor Alexander Ramsey obtained signatures from the Dakota Indians on a document which broke all former papers, including power of attorney. The Dakota believed that the previous trader's paper had also been revoked, but this was not the case. Governor Ramsey, whose duty it was to distribute the hand money to the Dakota, saw the trader's paper as an irrevocable order to pay the persons named the designated sums. In other words, Ramsey intended to pay the treaty money to the traders and not the Dakota. Ramsey arrived at the Traverse de Sioux on November 14, 1852, and he sought the signature of a receipt which would allow him to pay the majority of the money to the traders and thereby fulfill the terms of the trader's paper. But what the governor found when he arrived was, according to the trader Joseph R. Brown, an evil and turbulent spirit. The Dakota persisted in demanding that the hand money be paid to them in full. They argued that the trader's paper was not an agreement made in open council and that the document had been revoked based on what they had signed two months earlier. Led by Chief Red Iron, the Dakota established a soldier's lodge and began brandishing their weapons and dressing in war attire. In response, Governor Ramsey summoned a detachment of soldiers from Fort Snelling who arrived on November 19th. Violence nearly erupted when the Soldiers' Lodge came down to the Council House where the Fort Snelling Detachment was stationed. Seeing that the U.S. troops were ready to open fire, the Dakota turned away. Governor Ramsey then decided to arrest and detain Red Iron when the Chief refused to meet in Council. This led to the disbursement of the Soldiers' Lodge and the opening of discussions. Eventually, 11 chiefs and braves were found willing to sign a receipt for the payment of the hand money. As a result, $250,000 of the total $275,000 was paid directly to the traders and those of mixed race as stipulated in the traders' paper. Therefore, the Dakota were never paid their hand money from the Treaty of Traverse to Sioux.